Come here, little boy, and tell Santa what you want for Christmas. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're an awful big boy to be sitting on Santa's lap. <laughs> oh, what do you want for Christmas, little boy? Santa, I want a Red Rider BB gun. Oh, oh no. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Nice football. <laughs> That's a good little boy. <laughs> now get out of here. Santa's got eggnog to drink. <laughs> Stay tuned, coming up we get into the holiday spirit as Santa pays us a visit and shares his 12 tips for improving situational awareness. Hello and welcome to the Situation Awareness Matters show, episode 383. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence, time compressed environments with changing conditions. The SA Matters mission is simple. We want to help you see the bad things coming in time to prevent bad outcomes. Today's feature segment is sponsored by Gasway Virtual Training. There are 33 online training programs there for you to choose from. Some of the programs are live events presented virtually, and some of them are pre-recorded programs. To learn more, visit samatters.com website and click on the Virtual Training tab. All right, if you haven't been with us for the past couple of episodes, then you missed my announcement of the most exciting piece of news to come from Situational Awareness Matters ever. We're expanding our mission and adding a cadre of master instructors. We were on track to do this in June of 2020, but the pandemic stalled those plans. But now that we seem to be making the turn and getting back to some form of normal, the demand for our programs is ramping back up again and we're moving ahead full steam. We'll be onboarding six master instructors to supplement the one that we already have. These instructors bring amazing credentials that include a fire officer, fire officers, a police officer, and an industrial trainer. And one of our master instructors based in the Netherlands will be focused on growing our business in the European and Asian markets. I'm sure there'll be much more to share with you after they complete the five day intensive train the trainer program in January. All right, let's jump into our feature segment as Santa shares his 12 tips for improving situational awareness. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, everyone! I know that everyone's feeling particularly festive this time of the year, and old Santa is feeling some situational awareness love. Surely you've heard of the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> oh, you know, partridge in a pear tree and all that other stuff that no one really wants. Oh, perhaps with the exception of the five golden rings, of course. Just don't wear all the rings at one time. <laughs> Oh, you know that old Santa has good situational awareness. He's always capturing the clues and the cues of the good little girls and boys. And in the spirit of Christmas, old Santa would like to share with you his list for how to develop and maintain strong situational awareness all year long. And of course, like any child of Christmas, this list could be so much longer than 12 items. <laughs> oh, you know that. So I encourage you to go back through the archives on the SA Matters website and read some of the more than 400 articles. That's right, 400. <laughs> and they're all free. 
That's Santa's gift to you. All right, here's Santa's 12 ways to improve situational awareness wish list. I hope you have them this Christmas and all throughout the year. <laughs> Number 12, communication skills. Oh, <laughs> this is one of Santa's favorites. This includes both listening and speaking skills. Flawed communications can be a significant barrier to situational awareness. There are many articles about communications on the SA Matters blog that include suggestions for how to improve communications. Just click on the search box on the right side of the page and type communications to see all of the articles on this topic. You know, in the olden days, they used to communicate by banging on drums. <laughs> now they have handheld computers, for goodness sakes, and we're still plagued with communications challenges. Santa can tell you that even with 12 drummers drumming, there are still many opportunities to improve in this area. Number 11. Vigilance. To be vigilant is to always be on guard. Ho <laughs> ho, always on guard. Your imagination is not good enough to think of all the ways you can get killed while performing high risk, high consequence work. Be alert, even when it seems like things are routine. That is the mindset of the survivalist. Nero fiddled while Rome burned and 11 pipers played their flutes at Christmas. Play whatever instrument you want. Just be sure to do it with your guard up. Always. Ho, 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 ho. Number 10, avoiding judgment. The judging mind cannot be a learning mind. When you jump to conclusions about how workers are getting hurt or killed, you miss some really important lessons on how things unfold around them. Why things made sense to them at the moment that things went wrong. This Christmas season, the lords may be leaping, but keep your feet planted firmly on the ground. No jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Number nine, ask the hard questions. When your organization has a near miss or a casualty event, don't dance around the issue. Address the issues head on. Near miss and casualty events present great learning opportunities. If you're going to do any dance, make it a safety dance, not a denial dance. <laughs> the moves for the safety dance result in learning and enlightenment and change. The moves for the denial dance produce anger and resentment and blame. Number eight, debrief. There is a lesson to be learned after every incident. Even if things turn out okay, <clears throat> there are lessons to be learned. Milk every opportunity to learn and share. If you can't think of one, come up with some what-if scenarios to discuss. Discuss how things might have turned out if just the circumstances were just slightly different. Don't be shy. Grab a hold of opportunities to become smarter and squeeze out every lesson you can. <laughs> Number seven, know your limitations. Understand and respect the limits of your conscious awareness. The average person can only capture process and comprehend and recall about seven pieces of unrelated information. <laughs> oh, give or take two. That's not very many. And their short-term memory is so limited. Unless something happens fast to get that information tracking toward the long-term memory storage, it may be quickly forgotten. As you plan how to assess high-risk situations, Think about the five to seven most critical pieces of information you need to make a good decision. <laughs> oh, that's an important one. 
Number six, practice. To be proficient at hands-on skills, workers need to practice their skills a lot. Muscles learn from muscle movement. Muscles don't learn from verbal instructions. The geese may be laying around, but if you want to improve your safety and your skill set, you can't do it by being lazy. Get off your rumps and train. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, that's a good one too. Number five, the recipe from Hell's Kitchen. There is a predictable pattern of events that Santa has seen play out many times, ho, oh, oh, ho, resulting in workplace casualties. That makes Santa very sad. Avoid the five C's that make up the recipe from Hell's Kitchen. Complacency with no consequence leads to overconfidence, which results in a cocky attitude, all of which are the precursors for a catastrophe. To learn more about this, enter the recipe from Hell's Kitchen into the search bar on the essaymatters.com website. Ho, ho, ho! There's a lot to learn about that one. Number four, adopt an attitude of safety. It makes old Santa feel ill to hear people say, some workers are being too safe or too cautious in their approach to their work. Yes, high risk, high consequence work is, by its very nature, dangerous. But many of the ways workers are dying are preventable, very preventable. That makes Santa very sad. Pause right now and think of four people in your life whose lives would be forever changed if you died on the job. Be sure that the risks you take on your job are worth the potential consequences to the lives that will be forever changed if you would die. Oh, oh that one makes Santa very sad. Number three, crawl, walk, and run. All too often, workers want to train on the advanced skills without first mastering the basic skills. Santa encourages you to adopt a three-part crawl, walk, and run approach to your workplace training. Start with a slow crawl through the basic movements of an activity, discussing the how and the why in detail. Then walk through the sequence of events and the segments. Stopping along the way to make course corrections as needed. Then once the first two steps are mastered, then run! Ho oh, ho! Run! Forest, run! Run the full evolution! As if the work process was starting from beginning all the way to the end. If you get it right, run it again! And again! And again! <laughs> if you don't get it right, go back to the walk phase and make corrections in the segments. It's as simple as one, two, and three. Crawl, walk, and run. <laughs> Number two, use teams of at least two to supervise high-risk work. In high-risk activities like firefighting, responders work in teams. But oftentimes, the person in charge of those teams as in the firefighting world, we call that person the incident commander, is often left to fend for themselves, working alone in high-stress environments. Ho, oh, ho, Santa says, that's not good. That's a setup for failure. Strive to ensure those who are supervising workers during periods of high vulnerability work in teams of at least two. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. And finally, number one, complete a worksite assessment or a 360 degree size up. Through the 360 degree size up, it's the foundation for big picture situational awareness. <laughs> it allows you to figure out what the problem is before you start throwing around solutions. That's very important. Santa knows it can be very helpful to know in advance that the great solution that you were planning to implement isn't going to fix the problem. And to know that before things go wrong. Well, that's it. 
Those are the 12 ways that Santa recommends to improve your situational awareness. Here's wishing you the best of the holiday season and a prosperous, healthy, and safe new year. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Thank you, Santa, for taking time away from your workshop to be with us today. Since the start of the pandemic, I've had some tremendous opportunities to present my programs on a virtual platform for groups ranging in size from 6 to 400 with recorded playbacks being viewed over 29,000 times. Here's hoping booster shots will allow us to continue our quest towards some form of normalcy. I want to take a moment to thank the organizations that have hosted virtual and live situational awareness programs since the last episode aired. The International Association of Fire Chiefs Volunteer and Combination Officers Section Symposium in the Sun, the Char West Council of Governments in the Bridgeville Fire Department, the Williston, Vermont Fire Department, the Montana Bureau of Lands, the Worthington, Ohio Fire Department, and the Waukesha, Wisconsin Fire Department, who enrolled 100 of their members in the Situation Awareness Matters Online Academy. A special thanks to the organizations who have allowed me to offer your members virtual training. If you're interested in hosting a live event or a virtual program, just click on the Contact Us tab at the top of the essaymatters.com homepage and I will give you a call. Remember to check the show notes for how to subscribe to our newsletter and how to follow us on social media. There we share ideas about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to improve the skills of critical thinking and resilient problem solving. Well, that's it. Episode 383 of the Situation Awareness Matters show is complete. Thank you again to Santa for paying us a visit today, and thank you to our viewers and listeners for sharing some of your valuable time with us today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters show with Dr. Richard Gassaway. If you're interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit his website, essaymatters.com. If you're interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for a program, or if you would like to be a guest on his show, click the Contact Us tab at the top of the homepage.